Epilepsy affects more than 3 million Americans and 50 million people worldwide. It can develop unexpectedly with no known cause and at any age. When I was 15 years old, I walked into my mother's bedroom. I said something to her, and before she had a chance to say she didn't understand me, I was on the floor having a seizure. My first uh, seizure occurred in a supermarket um, while I was uh, shopping for items for Easter dinner. And uh, I suddenly couldn't read labels. My vision became blurred. I didn't know what was happening. And the next thing I knew is that I was being taken out in an ambulance. When I turned 15, it got really bad. And um, I started having a lot of those episodes. And <clears throat> it, was, it was very frightening. I thought I was going crazy. And one night I was just crying and I said, Mom, is this what a seizure is? And she said, I don't know, you know, maybe it is. When Anthony was born, um, he had lack of oxygen. And we discovered at 11 months that he started having epilepsy. An estimated 35% of people with epilepsy have uncontrolled seizures. Anti-epileptic drugs alone in this population are not effective. Alternative treatments like VNS therapy may be an effective option. When patients are having seizures or side effects that are not tolerable, and the patients have tried at least three different anti-epileptic medications, we moved and looked at other treatments like VNS therapy. Before the VNS therapy, uh, several different medications, uh, and the brain operation. The, uh, with the brain operation, I was told that 81% of the people never have another seizure. So against my parents' wishes, I said, we're doing that. And uh, didn't, it did not work as well as we'd hoped. And they put him on phenobarbital which he was fine for um, many years until he hit puberty, and then it started a downward um, pattern with his seizures. It was very hard. Um, we, um, it was very heartbreaking to see him um, have up to 14 seizures a day, and then sleep all day, and then sometimes sleep the next day. He didn't eat. Um, that was another thing he didn't do. Um, so it was, it, was, it was hard for us. The seizures did affect um, like my time with friends, and it did affect like my work and my school and things like that, um, especially the side effects from the medication. Every medication had a side effect. When my seizures were best controlled by medication, um, if I sat down and wasn't talking, I would go to sleep. I couldn't watch the evening news. I had to give up my position at the church. We had to bring in another pastor to take over my work. The congregation let me stay on on a part-time basis. And with medication, that was about all I could do. VNS therapy is a non-drug treatment option for refractory epilepsy that works through a pacemaker-like device implanted under the skin in the chest area that helps control seizures by regulating electrical activity in the brain. VNS therapy is not brain surgery. The best way I find to describe VNS therapy is a way to influence the brain uh, by sending a signal up the vagus nerve, which is a, uh, a nerve that comes directly from the brain and serves as a natural electrode. So we can stimulate it in the neck and influence the brain that way. VNS therapy consists of an implanted pacemaker-like device and stimulating lead. The thin, flexible lead runs under the skin and wraps around the left vagus nerve in the neck. The generator, roughly the size of a small pocket watch and weighing less than one ounce, is implanted under the skin in the patient's left chest area. The lead is then attached to the generator. VNS therapy delivers mild, intermittent stimulations to the patient's left vagus nerve, which then activate various areas of the brain, helping to prevent electrical irregularities that cause seizures. The device is programmed by an external computer to stimulate that nerve for a period of time and then not stimulate for a period of time and cycle on and off 24 hours a day 
365 days a year. In a typical follow-up visit, the patient will come in and we will interrogate the device to make sure that the battery is working. We will also adjust the parameters to make sure that the patient is tolerating it well or if the patient is having seizures, we can change the parameters to help the seizure control. VNS therapy and medications are both necessary to treat epilepsy. The good thing is that the VNS therapy is not going to interact with any medication and it can be added on to any medication regimen for the treatment of epilepsy. When should you consider VNS therapy? Good candidates for vagus nerve stimulation are patients who have failed several medications in succession or who have their seizures controlled on medication but at such high doses that the side effects are intolerable. My doctor felt that I was a good candidate for VNS therapy because uh, I had failed so many medications, was dealing with so many side effects, and after being in the epilepsy monitoring unit, showed that I was not a candidate for surgery. The best alternative, he thought, was VNS therapy. What can be expected from the implant procedure and what are the typical side effects associated with VNS therapy? The actual procedure takes me about an hour and 15 minutes to perform. The patient is admitted the same day of surgery and under general anesthesia, uh, the device is implanted. Patients describe very little uh, discomfort after the procedure. They typically return to work or school within one or two days following the procedure. To summarize the risks of the VNS implant, infection is the most important one, and that's about 1%. That requires removal of the device. Injury to the nerve, which oftentimes is temporary, is just under 1%. And then the general risks of any uh, procedure, uh, including those of anesthesia, are included. These are very low and um, much less than 1%. The most common side effects that people experience with stimulation of the vagus nerve uh, includes a hoarseness of the voice, tingling in the throat, a little cough when the stimulation first begins, and sometimes some shortness of breath when they're exerting themselves. Now these side effects only occur when the device is on, which is typically uh, every five minutes for 30 seconds is the stimulation on. So it is only then when the patients experience these side effects. Also, the side effects are very well tolerated. The only side effect I noticed from the VNS therapy early on was the, the shortness of breath and the tingling sensation. And of course, when it would cycle, my voice became very thin. Now my voice has grown strong enough to where I don't notice it as much and uh, the shortness of breath I haven't experienced in a couple of years. What treatment outcomes can be expected with VNS therapy? Many of our patients, um, in addition to having a decreased seizure frequency, also tell us that the severity of the seizures have improved. Um, so the reduction in the seizure frequency goes hand in hand with the severity improvement and then also reduction in the medications that are required to control the seizures. Most patients still require medication, but oftentimes the number of different drugs or the, the doses can be reduced so that any side effects or toxic effects of the medications can be reduced as well. So if the vagus nerve stimulator um, is useful in that patient, oftentimes there are other benefits besides a reduction in seizure frequency. After VNS therapy, um it was, it was completely different, it was wonderful. I still have seizures now, but it's maybe like one a week versus, you know, 15 to 30 a day. The recovery time is much better, the postictal state is shorter, and the seizures are a lot less intense rather than before VNS therapy. Anthony C. 